Hello everyone, my name is Nuvala and welcome to another video. This week's video is the Java Edition Gold and XP farm. As you can see, it's built on the roof of the nether, but you can also build this on top of a huge lava lake in the nether itself. The decoration is quite hard to build, definitely in survival, but the reward is worth it in my opinion. The material list is in the description, so without further ado, let's go! We're gonna start with the easy part, which is the functional part. This is based on Ian XO4's design. So if you want an in-depth walkthrough of this farm, I highly suggest you go and watch his video. I will link it in the description. To start off, find yourself a nether waste biome and go up to Y level 118. If you need help with this, you can press the F3 button at the top left of your keyboard to see the coordinates on the top left of your screen. Once you've gotten yourself to Y level 118, you want to press the F3 button again together with the G button. So F3 plus G. This will show you the chunk borders. You want to dig out four chunks, two by two chunks. And you want to dig it out two blocks high. This is the same as a 32 by 32 area. To make this process a lot faster, I highly suggest you get an Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 5 pickaxe. And if you got a Netherite pickaxe, then you should be able to dig out the entire room without wasting half of your pick. Once you've dug out the room, find the intersection of the four chunks and place a portal here of two blocks wide and three blocks high. Then at one side of the portal, make a small room in which we are going to place a turtle egg. However, we will only do that at the end, because otherwise the zombie piglins will be in the way of us building the spawn room. For now, you want to dig your way up to Y level 121 and you want to dig out another room of 2x2 two two chunks straight above the one you just dug out. After that, dig out the two blocks in front of the nether portal so that piglins can fall down. And in each of the corners of the room, dig out four blocks and place trapdoors so that piglins that are scared of the zombified piglins will walk over these holes and despawn. ENXO4 is great in explaining how this works, so for this part I highly suggest to watch his video if you want to know more about this. Once you've done this for all four of the corners, you can make your way down and you can close off the area towards the top. However, if you do it like this, it won't work. Because now, if we place a turtle egg and we place a trapdoor in front of it like this, the piglins are not attracted as you can see. That's because it needs a two block airspace above the turtle egg for the piglins to jump on it. Therefore, place the blocks on these locations and they should get attracted to the turtle egg. There you go. Now you can light up the portal after you've taken the coordinates of the portal. So the targeted block on the right side of the screen shows you the coordinates of the portal. So in my case it's 272 and minus 49. Now you can light up the portal, but don't go through the portal. Instead, grab a ladder, make your way up. And now we are going to the nether roof. Dig into the ceiling until you find a place where the bedrock is at Y level 127. You can see if it's on Y level 127 by looking at the targeted block on the right hand side. As you can see, that block is at Y level 127. Now make your way up there using ladders. Press the forward key and the jump key 
grab an ender pearl and aim it just above the ladder and throw it. Now before you do this, make sure that you have a way back down. So grab some obsidian and a flint and steel before you go up to the roof. Also, you will take some damage. So don't do this if you're very low on health. When you get to the roof, you want to find the intersection of your four chunks again. So straight above your portal and you want to pillar up all the way to Y level 244. Then place a glass block and you should be at Y level 245. You can now bridge out in any direction for 20 blocks using glass because mobs will not spawn on glass blocks. At the end you can place a nether portal. It needs to be 3 blocks wide because of the airship balloon we're gonna build later. Make sure that for now you place slabs on top of the portal to make sure that no mobs will spawn on top. And then make some room for yourself to walk around. This first portal is the one we are going to use to enter the farm from the overworld. So to make sure that you don't fall off, place a barrier of glass blocks behind the portal and then you can light it. But don't go through it just yet. Go to the other side and create a platform of glass of about 5 blocks wide and 6 blocks long. Now straight above the spot that you pillared up earlier, you want to pillar up 3 extra blocks and then create a nether portal of 3 blocks wide and 3 blocks high as well. Make sure to put slabs on top of this one as well. This is the portal through which all of your zombified piglins will enter the killing chamber. So grab some glass and create a killing chamber just like this. And if you are also planning on building the decorated part, this is just temporary. You can place some trap doors underneath and then using some temporary blocks place slabs right here so you should have a small gap through which you can kill the zombified piglins. After that, pillar up behind the portal and create a wall out of glass with some slabs on top to ensure that the zombified piglins don't escape your farm through that way. You can then light the portal and crouch into the portal to go to the overworld. Once you get there, you want to destroy the portal you just came through and now grab those coordinates of the portal you wrote down earlier and multiply them by 8. So my portal was at x coordinate 272 multiplied by 8 is 2167 and z coordinate minus 49 multiplied by 8 is minus 392. On those coordinates Pillar up all the way to Y level 190 and on this spot create a nether portal of 3 blocks wide. After you've built the portal make sure that you build a wall at the back side to ensure that zombified piglins that travel through here don't fall down. And then bridge out 11 blocks in total to the other side and build a nether portal on top of this 11th block. This portal should also be 3 blocks wide and it should be 1 block higher than the bridge you just made. Widen the bridge to 3 blocks.
and using some slabs make a way up towards the other platform. Create a rail along the side, place slabs on the top half of the bottom block and on the bottom half of the second block. This way neither zombified piglins nor their babies will be able to fall off the side of the bridge. You can now light up both portals and travel through the one which is one block higher than the other one. You should end up in the killing chamber. Make your way out and it will take a minute or two but quite quickly the zombified piglins should come through the portal and your farm is now actually working. As you can see here, the zombified piglins are attracted to the turtle egg and they travel through the portal to the overworld where they are pushed across the bridge and travel through the other portal into the killing chamber. Now all you gotta do is swing your sword at them and get all the XP and all the gold items you will ever need. Now from this point on we're gonna focus on the decorative part. So I highly recommend that you break the portal for now because otherwise the zombified piglins will keep on spawning in while you are working on the farm. Get rid of the last few zombified piglins. And if for now you want to take a break for example, take the other portal towards the overworld and well, get back to your base. When you get to the overworld, your portal should be on the ground and you can see the bridge up high in the sky. Now I won't decorate that one for now, but maybe the airship inspires you to do that one as well. The airship is a pretty difficult build, especially the balloon, so for this we're going to use a website. The website is called plots.co.uk and on it you can choose different kind of forms we're gonna go for an ellipsoid. You will get to this screen and you can alter the dimensions of the ellipsoid moving around the sliders down below. We want to create an airship balloon of 13 blocks high, 13 blocks wide and 30 blocks deep. The lowest slider is for precision purposes and we'll keep this at 5. Now at the top right you can see that you will need 802 glass blocks for this. That's a lot, but it's worth it. Now this slider at the right hand side, if you click on the minus sign down below, it will take you down each level of the ellipsoid and this will help you in building it. I'm gonna use this as well, so I highly recommend you use the website. I will now show you how to get started on the balloon and then show you a time lapse of me building it. Okay so now we're back in Minecraft and here you can see the frame of the balloon that we just made. So at the front side here we have four blocks coming out of the portal and at the back side we have five blocks coming out of the portal. Together with the portal blocks and the blocks in between this should be 30 blocks long. Now from left to right you can see that I've made a line of in total 11 blocks and also from above to below. The balloon should wrap around this frame because it's 13 blocks high and 13 blocks wide. Now I'm gonna show you the bottom layer because there's something you need to know before building all the other layers on top. You will notice that you start off with a platform of black stained glass that it's six blocks long and five blocks wide. You wanna make sure that the long side is towards the back. So here you see the overview of the bottom layer and you can see that there is one block extra towards the right, which is the back in this case. I will now show you a time lapse of me wrapping the farm inside the air balloon. It should fit exactly. This will be a tedious task and definitely in survival, but you can do it. Know that in the end this will look great.
Once you're done, you should be able to place two glass blocks on top of the killing room portal and now it is completely wrapped inside the glass balloon. Well done, this is a very difficult part. When you're done and you have built this frame for reference, then you can delete the frame inside the build. We're now going to work on the ship, which is also a pretty difficult build to do, especially in survival. What you want to do is you want to count down 16 blocks below the killing room portal. And from there, build out one block towards the front and place a warp slab next to it. Place 12 warped planks and then another warped slab in front. Then grab polished blackstone slabs and place eight of these at the sides of these warped planks. Moving one layer up, grab polished blackstone blocks and place them in this order. Then grab some slabs and place these at the back right here and in the middle place a warped stair. Do this on the other side as well. Then grab your slabs again and place these on the side. There should be 10 slabs on each side. For the next layer, place down blackstone blocks like this. Make your way towards the front. And here, place the blocks like this. Note that the front looks different than the back. At the back side, we're going to place upside down stairs, right here, place a warped stair in the middle and slabs alongside it. Then on the side of the build, place five slabs, then four upside down stairs, and then three slabs again. Do this on both sides and at the front you can place slabs and a warped slab in the middle. Replace this blackstone block for warped wood. And don't forget these slabs on the side here. Moving up one more layer, it is going quite fast, but of course feel free to pause and check and double check if you've built it correctly. Make your way all the way to the front. And again, end with a warped block at the front. At the back side, we're going to place upside down stairs along the sides here. At the front, we're going to place a slab, then a stair, then another slab, and then we're going to use a warped slab, a blackstone slab, blackstone upside down stair and a blackstone slab again. Next layer, we're actually going to make the cabin for the ship now, so we're going to create two layers. We want to create a window here, just like that, and do this on the other side as well. 
At the front of the boat, we're also going to create an extra layer. Now let me double check here. Yeah, okay, so place these right here. And finish it off using the stairs. There you go. The next part of the ship is the buoy, if I pronounce it correctly. It's the side of the ship, basically. Grab your warped stairs and your warped slabs and there's a very specific way of placing them so make sure that you watch closely. Of course you want to do this at both sides. So that's the front of the boat, now let's do the back of the boat. The window should actually be one place backwards, sorry for that. It's an easy fix. You want to place the stairs facing away from each other and then place three slabs on these locations. You can use a warped trap door next to the window. You can use a warped fence inside of the window, if you like. Make your way around the back of the boat using the slabs and the stairs. Use some trap doors to make sure that no mobs can spawn on these spots. We will spawn proof the entire boat later on, but I'll show you that in a minute. First, let's finish this side of the boat as well. Again, you want to move the window one place backwards. There you go. We're now going to connect the boat to the balloon by placing black stone walls with warped fences on top. And at the place where they connect to the balloon, you want to place a black stone wall as well. You want to do this at the front of the ship and at the back of the ship. Before we do the back, you can fill in the floor using bottom half slabs because mobs won't be able to spawn on top of these slabs. As mentioned, we're also going to make the connections to the balloon at the back of the boat on these four locations. That's it, now we're going to work from the front of the balloon all the way to the back using blackstone stairs and blackstone slabs all along the central line of the balloon. Now at the front of the balloon we're going to place a gold block in the center, surrounded by warped stairs. All along the side of the balloon we're going to place warped fences. When you get to the middle of the side we're also going to make a gold emblem 
just like we did on the front. Continue your way with the fences around the build. Until you get to the back and then again make a gold emblem. And finish your way all around, making the final emblem on the last side as well. On top of these upside down stairs, you want to place trap doors because mobs can spawn on these places and that's something we don't want. We're also going to place these blackstone slabs and stairs along the central line from the bottom side of the balloon. However, it works a little bit differently because we're going to remove the lowest layer of glass. And we're actually going to make our way around this hole that we created with the blackstone slabs. Finish the central line all the way to the other side until you get to the emblem at the back side of the balloon. Now that already looks a lot more solid in my opinion. We're also going to create two lines along the side of the balloon using this blackstone. And from this side we also want to hang a soul lantern for extra detail. You want to replace some of the glass blocks for blackstone to make sure that the line doesn't break halfway through. Now you want to do this on four locations, so twice at the front to make a circle and twice at the back. And finally, next to the emblems on the side of the balloon, you can replace two of the warped fences with blackstone walls with some stairs on top and some warped fences below with some soul lanterns hanging from them. It's just time for the collection system now and then all we gotta do is prepare the farm again and you'll be ready to go. For the collection system we're gonna use the back of the boat and we're gonna work from the back towards the front. So place some blackstone blocks here and place three redstone dust on top. Then place three redstone repeaters facing towards the front of the boat. Right here. Place three blocks in front of it and then three blocks on top of it and three blocks in front of that. Place redstone dust on top and you should now have 9 redstone dust. On the blocks in front of the redstone repeaters place 3 redstone torches and then place blocks on top of them. On top of these blocks place comparators facing towards the front so the two sticks should be towards the front of the boat. Then place three hoppers facing into these comparators. So when looking from this side, the nozzle should be towards the right. Place down three double chests and place hoppers behind them facing into the chests. And then place an extra row of hoppers on top of these, facing into the lower hoppers. 
Now this farm will produce a lot of gold nuggets, rotten flesh and gold ingots, but also a lot of golden swords. And these swords can clutter your collection system quite easily. Therefore, we're going to create a lava trash can in which all of these golden swords are being burned and deleted from the system. Create a small patch of blocks on the right side here and place a dispenser facing downwards right here. Close off that area below the dispenser. Place a bucket of lava in the dispenser. And then grab a lever to dispense the lava into the empty block beneath. So in there, right now, is a lava source. Don't break the blocks next to it. Now grab a hopper and place it on top of the dispenser. And then place a row of hoppers which goes all the way across the collection system you made earlier. Until you get to this corner. This is where we'll hook it up to the farm upstairs. Back to the dispenser, because this is not finished. You want to place a comparator facing into the hopper on top of the dispenser. Then behind the comparator you want to place a solid block. Place a redstone dust behind that solid block. Delete the block below. And place a redstone repeater facing towards the lava source. So that way. Now, when you place an item in one of these hoppers, it travels towards the dispenser. And when it enters the dispenser, it is automatically fired into the lava. Now sometimes these items travel too fast. So by placing a lever right here next to the dispenser, you can flush the system manually when too many golden swords are flowing into the dispenser at once. It's now time to spawn proof the ship. You want to place trapdoors on top of the warp wood wherever mobs can spawn. And on top of all of the blackstone you want to place buttons. You can also use slabs if you like. Now on top of the collection system, you can close off the area using slabs like this. In this way you can cover up the collection system and you make sure that no mobs can spawn on top. Now you can decorate the front where your chests are any way you like. I just like to use a couple of trapdoors. And all we gotta do now is set the filter items for each of the chests. So to do that, you want to place four dirt blocks in the last four spots of the hopper facing into the comparator. In the first slot, you can then place a full stack of, in this case, gold nuggets. Do this for all three of the hoppers. And you wanna use a stack of gold nuggets, a stack of rotten flesh, and a stack of gold blocks. In this way, all the golden swords will travel through towards the lava source. As mentioned earlier, and something that I forgot, is to place some warped fences inside of the windows on the side of the boat. Once you're satisfied with spawn proofing the entire ship, you can head upwards using hoppers and connect it to your farm. Once you're up here, first you want to close off the hole in the middle of your balloon. Use lower half slabs for this. Decide where your ladder is going to go down and then jump down to place some trap doors and place ladders against them. Now you have a very cool way of getting up and down from your collection system to the farm and back down again. And to finish it all off, you can now create the killing room again 
and I would use the black stained glass that you use for the balloon as well because it blends in very nicely. Place some slabs in front. Some trap doors right here. And then connect the hopper that you placed earlier all the way towards the killing chamber. And that's it. It's now hooked up. Make sure that you close off the area so the baby zombified piglins can't escape as well. And make a staircase up towards the killing spot. Just light up the portal, wait a few seconds for the zombified piglins to spawn. And there you go. You've now got yourself an awesome gold farm. Have fun and enjoy. All of the drops should be collected below in your chests and all of the golden swords should as mentioned go towards the lava source. If you pull the lever you can manually delete the swords from the system whenever they fill up. Some final optional details are to connect the ship one more time to the balloon using some black stone walls at the front side of the boat and by hanging some soul lanterns from the side of the boat as well, like I'm doing right here. You've just made an amazing build, which is quite hard to do. You can be very proud of yourself. And that's it for me. So like the video if you did. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe if you want to see more. I hope to see you in the next one. And have a great day. Cheers everyone.